Welcome back to the workshop. So we're continuing the build series of the electronic lead screw. So that's the kit of parts put together by James Clow of Clow42. I'll put the link to his video series down below. Uh, well worth checking that out. So although it is a kit, uh, obviously it needs a range of parts adapted to fit your particular lathe. Now the way the system works is we've got an optical encoder and I made up a little bracket here and that runs via this little belt off the main spindle and then it knows where the spindle is and the spindle speed in particular. Um, and then it drives a stepper motor, or in my case a servo, onto the lead screw down here and that allows you to synchronise the lead screw with the spindle and then you can cut threads whatever pitch you want using the controls as inputs on the front here on the display. So in terms of progress so far, I've got the encoder mounted on this custom bracket and that runs off this belt here, that's one to one, and we know that works. Uh, I've also opened up this panel here um, from the original lathe panel so I can drop this user interface panel in. We know that works as well, so that's all finished. Obviously, um, some of the wiring is yet to be connected up properly and we need to sort out the control box. So let's head over to the bench and we'll show you what progress I've made over there. So here's the custom control panel that I CNC machine out last time and engraved all the letters and so on. And I started to put some of it together. Uh, now I think I was waiting for the seven pin encoder. So that's now come in, so I've got that installed. And I've also done some of the wiring. I mean, wiring's a bit tedious. So let me show you what, where I've got to so far on that. So at the back there, you can see I did have a 90 degree uh, power cable. This is the five pin uh, power cable that goes in here. Um, it was getting in the way a little bit, so I just uh, swapped it out for this straight one, so that looks quite neat now. And I've finished making up uh, the two DuPont connectors, so this one is for the display, what goes out to the front panel for the display, and then that one's for the encoder. We've got the fan mounted up, uh, and then we've got the those wires routed, and some of the soldering and connections done down here. So in terms of the power, I've got the IEC connector in here, I haven't wired that in yet, I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, and then in terms of power coming out, I've got this to um, an IEC connector. That goes into the digital readout for the display, and that's powered up now, that's connected. Um, that's because we're going to run the power in, and then it will come straight back out again to feed that. So if you turn the switch on, it will run this unit and the digital readout all in one in one go. And then in terms of what's in here, so we've got the, this is the power that comes out again to the digital readout. So that's all in through that cable gland. So that's all connected up. Um, I haven't connected up the power here because um, what I've ordered is a, a filter system um, which will go just on the wall here. I'll make a little custom bracket for that. And the idea of that is you may remember in the last video I was having quite a lot of interference from the inverter that's on the lathe because this was plugged in next to it and the, all the electrical noise was going back out through the cable into this power into here and I guess through the power supplies and making its way either onto here on the display but the display was jumping around all over the place. So my plan is you can buy uh, these with filters built in, but they're quite small, whole things like that. So I'm guessing the componentry is quite small inside. Um, you can buy little metal box types, which are standalone like that. Again, I've used one of those on my drill press and that was okay. But I wanted to sort of go the best I could on this. So I've got, uh, well, it's a hi-fi grade apparently um, box. It's about that long. Um, it's, got, it's got the usual coils and um, well, so now I think some suppressing capacitors. I'll put the circuit diagram on the screen. But essentially, it should be a low pass filter and that should stop some of the high frequency noise going through, getting through here from the inverter from the lathe, uh, messing up the electronics. Well, hopefully that's what it'll do anyway. Um, so it's quite a large unit. So hopefully there's some big values there and it gives a good performance. So it is specifically for hi-fi. So hopefully that'll do the trick and uh, there is space for its amount down there. Uh, the one you see down the corner there, that's for the USB, so that's now screwed in. So we can flash the uh, microprocessor when we, when we want to change the code or change the parameters. I think it's set up incorrectly for uh, the ratios at the moment, so we, we can quickly um, put the right code in so it gets that bit. And then on the other side, that goes down here, we've got our USB and goes into that micro USB down there. It's a very small one. So that's all in, and the other things are... You can see on the back of those GX16 connectors, very tedious job. I didn't really film much of it. Um, essentially, I've made up of those little connectors there. If it will focus on those, there we go. Uh, those and the power one for the two pin ones done as well. I haven't done this one. We've got that one yet to do. And this one is for the emergency stop function, which is here. 
let's just talk briefly about the emergency stop and this system down here. What I've ordered is just the normal emergency stop mushroom head on the front of the lathe next to the control panel. The idea of that is if for some reason it's doing something a bit unusual, it's threading too fast or it's going to hit the chuck or whatever, um, I want to be able to stop uh, the servo dead and for it not to come back on again when you release that emergency stop. So I've got three pins in here available. I should only need to use two of those. And I've just been reading around about the best way to do it. Now, if you've got um, a stepper motor, uh, you could um, uh, use the inhibit function on that on one of the, oh, I've, got, oh, I've got it over here. Oh, enable, there we go. Uh, you've got the enable down there, so you could make use of that. The only problem would be, you'd hit the emergency stop and then on this stepper unit for I'm not going to use a stepper but just giving the idea as soon as you undo that emergency stop um, if the spindle's still turning then this will still be putting pulses out yeah you'll you'll mess up the thread but more critically it will start moving again and that could be a disaster so I don't want to do that so it needs to be something where um, when you hit the emergency stop the system knows it's got into stop and you've got to do a reboot or a reset um, so well, at the moment I'm thinking is to use uh, one of the pins down here, one of the input output pins, and then I'll have to write an extra piece of code, maybe an interrupt, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I'll have to look at one of those pins. I can draw five volts off here, so I can feed it with five, and then the emergency stop can interrupt that. So if it goes from a five to a zero, or something like that, then it goes into emergency stop mode, which basically means it will stop running the code altogether. The only way to get it to start again will be to cycle the power on the front of the panel, or possibly uh, turn the whole thing off at the wall. Now the only thing is, I think, um, if you come out of that condition and you've got the lead screw engaged, you know, on the nut is still engaged and the spindle is still running and you fire it up again, if you stood in that mode I think it will still keep moving. So I've got to think of as another way to do that. Um, I mean hopefully by then you've put it in emergency stop, you know you've got to, sw to switch the spindle off and disengage the lead nut to, to be back to safe again. but. Yeah, still thinking about that. I think that's the way I've got to with it, but we'll worry about that later. Um, we need to get the basic system working first. So while we're here, we'll just talk about these DuPont connectors. So I've found these to be very fiddly to make. I've made quite a few over the past few months and years, and yeah, they're always a bit fiddly. The little pins that go in there are very small, awkward to get into the crimp and so on. So I thought, um, let's try and make a fixture and see if we can make it a little bit easier. So in terms of making this, it's just a little off-cut piece of aluminium. Uh, put it in the CNC machine and then machine the top so it was flat. Machine the little pocket. Also, I think one of the ends was a bit rough, so just brought that down to the final size. And then it was over to the uh, drill press and I set that up uh, to drill the little holes in there. Marking them out first with the spot drill. Then drill them two millimeters all the way through. Now 
then the last operation just for that cable clamp I just drilled and then uh, drilled that for M5 I think it was and then tap the hole power tap that through So I made up this little block here. So a little block of aluminium with a little recess down there. I think that was three millimeters. Some two millimeter holes spaced at five millimeters apart. And then there was a little cable clamp there that just you just slip the cable under just to hold it while you got it into position. And then these are those uh, Dupont style pins, which are really fiddly. And then that at least allowed you to get the the clamp around. Um, around the outer insulation part and get it to hold in the wire before you then took this out and went to the crimp tool and crimped it. Right, the next job is to wire up the servo. So let's go do that. So this is the little connector you get with it. Uh, compared to some I've used in the past, these are very small. So I these little screws. And the little gates are quite small as well. Anyway, it works. So we'll well we need to create a cable that runs from there through the channel and then it goes to uh, the signal one down here. And we need we need six pins. And that's a one, two, three, four, five, that's a six-way connector. Alright, let's get to it. So although this isn't the best cable to use, this is everything we've got at the moment. I don't have any screened left. Um, there was just a little bit that came on the encoder. So we'll see how we get on. Um, if we get interference or problems with it, um, I'll put screen cable on it. Uh, but for now I've got this, which is 8 core. Uh, it's pretty small gauge, but then on these, um, these 7 pins, they're pretty small anyway. So I've just put solder in each of the little solder buckets at the end of the pins. Got some heat shrink round, and I just find this really fiddly. Just take your time and get through it in the end. Um, and then we'll put a heat shrink over the whole lot to make it look a bit neater. Right, so that's pin one, pin two next. So we've got our GX16 all finished, soldered on. Always a bit fiddly, but we got there. So I'll just strip back the other end, and then uh, I'm going to put the little crimp these wires on. I've had to double these back and find a pretty small one. See if that holds. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, I'll finish these off and bring you back. Okay, right, so let's wire this into the terminal. Okay, before we do that, I need to pass it through here because I don't think that will fit. No. Or at least something just to hold it in place.
Okay, there it is all finished. Everything tight. All right, let's feed that through. guide okay so we've got our power in there to the little uh, booster board that goes out to the display that's for the encoder and that's for the servo so I think everything in here and uh, we've got our power going to there to the fuse USB we've got the earth for the shield for the encoder yeah, I haven't got shielded wires on these two. I may live to regret that, but if I do, I'll have to order. If I have problems, I'll have to order some more with the screening on. I think that means we can put the cover back on here, and that part's done. through there I might have to relieve a bit in the cover all right it's on so I think in terms of the parts in here apart from the e-stop which I've got to work out how best to implement that that is done So I made up this paper template, just some scrap bit of paper I had in the drawer, taped it all together and then uh, marked the outline around the unit and then marked where the holes were. And I taped it to the wall, got it into the right position so it's not going to foul when the garage door comes open, it's not too near the units, you know, I've got access, I can get the cables into the bottom. Uh, drilled out the holes using the uh, 7mm masonry drill, tapped in the wall plugs in the usual way and now we can mount it to the wall. Since that top one's the most awkward, we'll go for that first. So it's, I don't even know if you can see it, right at the top corner there. So we'll try and get that one in, up there, and then the other two. Yeah, so it seems pretty secure on three fixings. It's a bit awkward to get the screw in, but we got there. So we've got one down there, one there, and one right at the top there. I just couldn't get into there. Can't even film it, can? Is it there? Oh, you might be able to just about to see the hole over there. Anyway, that's what we've got. So we're pretty clear near to the lathe. Uh, so we just need to work out where the cable runs are going to go to go into each of those connectors. So I think the next stage really was to get all the wires routed through here. So then I knew how long we got to be uh, and then I know how long to cut them so I can make the final connection into the box. Um, so I've just been routing the encoder through there. I've got a couple of clamps on there just using some existing threads. Uh, so I've got the display cable through that one. 
and then I took this end plate off and then added these little cable guides here. So I've got one there, which will take these three cables, because the third one to go through there, which we'll go into here, will be an emergency stop. So that, when I figure out the best way to implement it, it'll be an emergency stop on there, and that will stop uh, the, the um, motor down here, uh, the servo driving the lead screw. So it'll stop the advance of the carriage towards the chuck. Okay, so the servo will live down here. I'll probably end up remachining this make a custom bracket so that holds the um, servo on there and then the wires that come out of that so we've got power and we've got all the different signals they'll I've got to watch out for this belt but they'll come through this cable tray here which is why I've uh, put that at an angle and quite so low so the cables come to the side of the motor into there and then up to the top well they will go across this gap and then into the cable tray there and then out the back and then round to the enclosure and into the GX16 connectors well, I was all set up to do the wiring down there to make those last connections, but this soldering iron, which I've only had one or two years, had decided to stop working. So I'll have to dig out my old Antex, which, you know, the classic orange one, which I think is about 35 years old. So I'll find that and see if I can finish this off. But uh, I think that's probably going to be it for this video. So while waiting for that, I did manage to get the little emergency stop wired in. So that's the emergency stop, which I'm going to try and work out how to make that stop uh, the speed, or stop the motor, basically, or the uh, servo. So I'll just be like that. It won't stop the spindle, but at least it'll stop the traverse. So that's the plan anyway. And I've got the wire hooked up and it runs out here and down the side and out the back. So in terms of what we have achieved, well, I've managed to get the box finished, got it mounted onto the wall and got that all buttoned up. And I was hoping to get some of the wiring done or most of the wiring done, but yeah, I'll have to wait till that soldering iron to come. I uh, got the emergency stop wired in and got all the cable routing. Uh, through here, put these little cable guides on. Obviously, they haven't got the little top hats on there, the closures. That's to come, and I've worked out what I'm going to do, so that's a good step forward. Obviously, we've got the encoder wired up, and that looks okay, and that functions. So, I think next time we need to get these uh, the rest of the cables soldered together, make up the connectors, and then figure out what I'm going to do with the servo motor down here and what kind of custom mount I need. Okay, well, as always, hope you've enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. If you're enjoying this series you want to see more, feel free to subscribe, hit the bell, you get a notification when I upload the next video. And see you next time.